Okay, let's move on with our variables. We created a float variable that holds some speed that we're going to need very soon. At the moment we are printing this value in the console, but it has no use for us really, so I would just get rid of it. I delete it and I think it's time to create another variable and it will have a global scope. What does it mean? The global scope is the variable that will be created on the top of our class, like the float speed variable was created before. It's got a global scope because it means that it can be accessed from any method that we are going to have in the script. If we created it here in the start method, for example, it would have a local scope and won't be accessible from other methods. And we want to have it accessible. So we are creating it here at the very top. So let's press enter and define a new variable. So just to remember, the variable consists of the type and the name. So the type is float because it will hold decimal numbers. Quite a lot of values that we are going to use in Unity will hold a float value. So this is, I think, very important type of the variable for us at the moment. And we want to create a variable that will be responsible for moving to the left and to the right. And then we we'll create a variable that will be responsible for moving up down. But first let's focus on X position. So I'll call it move X and I'm not going to assign any value to it yet. I want to show you something. We are going to make our player to move to the right, like maybe two units. So in order to move it two units to the right, we have to use our transform component because the transform component, I will click on this console exercise object. And as you can see, the transform component is responsible for position, rotation and scale. So whenever we want to change the position or the rotation or scale, we should use transform component. And normally we would have to make a reference to this component but because this is so common to reference it, the Unity made it easier for us. So we don't have to make a reference like in this example. We can just type transform and then use a dot and use position. So now we are referencing this position of that object that this script is attached to. So now we have to assign a new value to it. But how to do it? The position, let's go back to the unity once more. And as you can see, the position consists of X, Y and Z value. Maybe before we move on, I want to add some graphics to our object so that is, it is better visible. In order to add some graphics, we have to add a special component. All the graphics in the unity that we are going to use for now will be called sprites. So to render them, we need to add a sprite renderer component. Let's start typing sprite renderer, click on it. And here, as you can see, there is a field called sprite. And in here, we have to add some graphic. There is no graphic really in the unity itself. We can use this dot. So let's use it for now. And later on, we are going to change it. You can change a color of it if you want to, maybe make it red so it stands out. And I will just reset its position so we can clearly see how it moves when we, once we press play button. In order to make all the positions zeros, we can just type, you know, zero in every of those fields, but there is an easy way. We can press on these three dots and choose reset. So it goes to the very center of it. But the camera is on our way. How to get rid of this gizmo? We can click on gizmos and for example, we can make it smaller like so, or we can just click on this camera to hide it. So it's up to you 
whatever is more convenient for yourself. I'll save it, Control S. So this is our object. And once I click on it once again and choose this move tool to have arrows to, to move it around, you can see that we have X, Y and Z. So when we are working with 2D project, we are mainly using X and Y. So now you can see that I'm moving to the right and this X value is increasing. If I go to the left, this will be decreasing. So it's a negative value now. If I go up, the Y value is increasing. And if I go down, the Y value is decreasing. So this is how we are going to move our player for now, of course. Later on, we will learn how to move it with forces, but I don't want to make it too complicated at the beginning. So we will start with moving our player with this transform component. So just remember X and Y value to change it. The Z value is how far it is from us. But because this is a 2D project, we don't need this value and it should stay at zero. Okay, let's reset it once again. So press on three dots and choose reset. Save it and go back to the script. And in here, we want to change this value so that once the game is started, it jumped on the position two. So it will be here, two units to the right. So let's go back. And because we need to specify three different values, we can't really use a float value. We have to use some other type of variable that Unity created for us and it's called vector. We have vector3 and vector2. We are going to use a vector3 variable. Whenever we are using a new vector, we have to use a keyword new. So just add a new and then as you can see, the auto suggestion already is showing us that we are going or might want to use a vector3. And we do want to use it. So just press tab. And now within the parentheses, we have to specify those three values. We want to move our player to the right. So we have to change this X position. So let's make a 2F. Don't forget about Fs. We don't want to move it vertically. So just leave it at 0F. And we definitely don't want to move it on the Z. So just leave it at zero and semicolon at the end. So now before we move on to Unity, let's see if we understand what is going on. We are defining our speed variable. We are not using it yet, so it doesn't matter really for now. We are defining our uh, move X variable, but we're not using it yet, so it doesn't matter now as well. And then we go to the start method where we change the position of our game object and we assign a new value to it, new vector. So always when we are assigning a new vector, we are using a new keyword. So this is standard. And inside the parentheses of this vector three, we are giving a new coordinates, a new value of X, Y and Z. So let's go back to Unity as you can see, our object is on 0, 0, 0. So now if I press play, it should jump to the right by two units. And it did. Well done. So let's imagine how to move it to the right and to the top, up, like two units as well. So it will be here. So we have to move it to the right two units and then, at, or at the same time, really, we want to move it up two units as well. Reset it, go back to the code and we have to change the Y position as well. So I would just type 2F in the Y argument section as well. Go back to Unity, wait a second so that Unity compiles our changes in the code and press play and as you can see we've got it on 2 and 2 both horizontally and vertically. So this is how we change the position of our object. And now we want to make our object moving on itself to move right all the time for example. So if it's supposed to move right 
we don't want to use this y value so let's put it back to zero and because it has to change its position constantly it need to move all the time we can't really use this start method we should use our update method so let's cut it and paste it in the update method but at the moment nothing will change because our transform position will be assigned to this vector 2f every frame so every time this update method will be executed it will do actually the same thing let me show you that so you shouldn't really see the difference it will all the time will be here so this is not what we want to achieve but there is something in programming that we called incrementation and decrementation which will assign a new value of it to this position and change it all the time based on that value we'll get back to it very soon so that you can understand it better but at the moment the important thing to know is that it's enough just to put a plus sign in front of the assignment operator don't worry we'll get back to it later on you will know how to use this incrementation and dec decrementation but not just yet let's go back to unity and press play and now as you can see woo, it jumped off to the right and it's moving like 1800 now it's going really fast you see and what is worth to mention that I think I already told that at the very beginning when we were talking about these methods that update method is hardware dependent so it means that on my computer it might be faster or slower than on your computers so in, on my computer there might be like 30 frames per second and on your computer there might be like 60 frames per second so because your computer is much more powerful this little dot this our object will move faster because it will add this to every frame so because your computer is working 60 frames per second it will move like 120 units to the right in one second while mine will be move only 60 units to the right so it's not fair is it if we were doing some racing game you would have a lot more chances to win than i do so there is some methods that we are using in unity to make it equal to make it the same and this is called time delta time maybe i will type it here as a comment so it goes like that time delta time and we have to multiply this vector by this value so let's go at the end here and just try to multiply by time and delta time so again auto suggestion and auto completion don't forget it just try to get used to it as soon as possible because this is really powerful and make it working with unity a lot faster so now if i go back to unity again and press play you can see that it will go slower you see it's really nice now but for example you might say okay this is too slow for me now i want to get it quicker how to do it this is why we created this speed variable so now we have to multiply our value by speed variable but because this is 0.2 it will go even slower now just have a look press play and yes this is going to the right but this is very slow so of course now if we want to change it we just modify our speed variable to make it go as fast as we want it to go like so i like this speed now and this is it for now Le in the next lesson we'll talk about how to use this move x and how to use user input so that we can move our dot to the left or to the right depending on our keystrokes